good morning good afternoon everyone people are joining from different time zone first of all thanks everyone for joining this webinar i'm tasi paul from bulwark distribution dubai hope all of you are well and safe bulwark is a value added distributor of information security solution having 21 plus years of experience in middle east and now in india for last 4 years the company has established in uh, middle east in 1999 and in 2000 2017 in india we are having 22 plus technology vendors and 700 plus business partners in middle east and india bulwark has established an excellent track record in delivering world class products and excellent customer service we deliver round the clock value added services through our partner network across the middle east and indian subcontinent region we work as an extended arm of security vendors whom we represent in the region promoting and selling the it security products and solution through our reseller and channel partners uh, we have a dedicated sales and marketing and certified technical team today we are here with mailstow a company specialized in on premise email archiving solution Bulwark is a distribution partner of Mailstore in Middle East and India. Today's session covers how to manage email with Mailstore, email archiving, and we'll be showing a live demo in the end of the session. With this, let me welcome Alex, Channel Sales Manager of Mailstore, and Heiko, Sales Engineer of Mailstore, to take you to through the session and your queries. Good morning, Alex and Heiko. Thank you for conducting the session for our customers and partners. I am now handing over to you, Alex, to take it for. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Tessie. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, yeah, thanks to everybody who's made the uh, um, yeah basically got the time to uh, join us for the session. Um, I'm Alex Kramer. I'm a channel sales manager, and I've been with Mailstore for four years, and I'm based in Germany. Uh, I'm joined by Heiko, our uh, sales engineer. He's a Mailstore veteran of seven years. Um, he will be covering technical questions and also showing the software live and in action a bit later on. Um, and also then we'll cover a few questions then after the live demo. So who is Mailstore? Well, Mailstore is made in Germany. We have been around since 2006. We're based in Fiers in Germany. We have about well over 80,000 customers in, in over 100 countries around the world. Um, we're highly specialized in email archiving for SMBs. We define an SMB as a business with up to about 500 seats. And we, well, Mailstore was part of Carbonite and we're now part of the open text information company. So kicking off, we want to basically look at what's happening with emails and are they becoming obsolete? Simple answer is no. What we're seeing is that year on year, email volume is growing. And that's thanks to things like your social media, everybody having a mobile device, business processes becoming more digital. You need an email to sign up for pretty much every service from Netflix, social media um, you need a an online account well you need an email for various online online accounts and so on so what we're seeing is email is here to stay and email is still the number one business tool for communication email volume is continuously increasing and if you just think about your average online purchase where you really need an email in the first place to have an account to make the purchase this will result in a whole chain of emails being sent you have your order confirmation, you have the payment confirmation, you have an email that your order is going to be shipped soon, you get a delivery confirmation email, you might even get a follow-up email um, regarding a review or satisfaction survey. So while the number of emails is growing, it doesn't mean the value uh, diminishes. The entire business, well, entire business process are actually taking place via email. So you've got the quotes, orders, and invoices. The entire conversation with the customer takes place via email. Um, and that includes sensitive and valuable information, things like personal information being shared, contact details, travel plans, business plans, financial reports. And 
people take this information for granted and they only really miss it and understand how valuable it is when it's gone. So what we're seeing is that emails are going to stay with us for a long, long time and the number of emails will keep increasing and they will still remain valuable. So this will brings with it some challenges. One of them is being missing emails. This can be because of things like malicious deletion. Um, this is actually something I've experienced firsthand at another company I was working at where employees were responsible for creating their own PST files to free up space in the inbox. And one of the employees found out they were going to lose their job and be retrenched. And on the day they found out, they went ahead and they deleted all the emails, the inbox, the outbox, the sent items, everything. They went ahead and deleted all the PST files. They pretty much deleted everything they could get their hands on. And this scenario actually happens a lot more often than, than a lot of companies like to admit. But you also have cases where email is not deleted on purpose. It happens by mistake. If you're cleaning up your inbox, just trying to sort out your mails, prioritize your emails, you might actually delete an, an important email along uh, at, at some point. Even the admins can make mistakes. So in a case where a policy hasn't correctly been applied in Microsoft 365, um, or if there's been a, a migration issue. As mentioned, PST files are still a big problem. They, they become corrupted or, or get misplaced. We look at a, um, another big challenge is um, the risk of exposure. If you're running a business, it is very likely that at some point you will have a dispute with either a supplier, a customer, or an employee. Without a record of your emails that you can fully trust and know that hasn't been tampered with, you're leaving yourself exposed. Employee disputes, they can include some pretty serious accusations, claims of abuse, harassment, even disagreements or misunderstandings regarding tasks, goals that have been set, deadlines that need to be met, promotions, bonuses, and so on. Emails, they can play a vital role in this. You have compliance requirements. These can be industry specific, such as for the banking or finance sectors or healthcare sectors. You also have international compliance requirements, um, the European GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. This affects a lot more companies, companies also outside of the EU. If your business is offering goods and or services to citizens in the EU, then it is subject to GDPR. Email that is sent to customers or suppliers and partners sometimes contains legally relevant information. These emails may be required as evidence in legal proceedings. We also know of cases where admins have actually spent months searching and indexing PST files. They were looking for specific emails that were needed as evidence for legal proceedings. And this is a real nightmare, especially if you don't have a tool to assist with, with the discovery. Red door, blue door. What, what we're doing here is basically visualize a classic customer dispute. And uh, there's this essentially where there's a difference in what was ordered and what was delivered. So if a customer experiences this when they're building a house where they order red doors, but blue doors were delivered and installed. So, so what do you do in this situation? Well, you're going to need to investigate the email correspondence and you've got to see what went wrong and whose fault it is. And you need that email conversation. You need to find it quickly and it needs to be authentic and you know it can't have been tampered with. There are other factors that, that might make it a bit more complicated, such, you know, what if the employee responsible is not around at that time? Or what if he's already left the company? Can you access their old emails? So a simple or basic customer dispute can quickly become a big challenge um, to resolve. Last but not least, is the issue of overloaded mailboxes. Most businesses have those employees who love to keep all the email just in case they need it. This causes problems for Exchange environments and Microsoft 365. Email clients tend to run quicker with the less email they have to work with. So regardless of the platform, using big mailboxes will have an impact that affects the performance with slow searches and long load times. 
So the quality email archiving solution can actually assist with all of the previously mentioned challenges. So how does email archiving work? Right now, you have users that have their incoming and outgoing emails. They are being handled by the email systems. These email systems, they can be cloud-based, so Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, or, or local email servers like Microsoft Exchange or yeah, IMAP or POP3 compatible servers. An email archive basically supplements the existing email systems. The administrator configures which emails are to be transferred to the archive and when, and whether archived emails should be deleted from the mailboxes on the email server. So with email archiving, emails can automatically be stored in the archive before they reach the user's inbox and as soon as they are sent. So emails are all, uh, so emails are securely stored and they cannot be tampered with. Retention policies can be put in place so that emails that are no longer needed are automatically deleted, helping with compliance. Emails in the archive can easily be searched, helping with e-discovery and auditing. The users can also be given access to the archive where they can search for specific emails um, or even their attachments. Once that email has been found, the user can then restore that email. And with the web access, users have the access to those emails from pretty much anywhere. There are two archiving methods available and choosing one depends on the email infrastructure and what is, what are you trying to achieve? What is your customer trying to achieve? So for folder structure and, and load reduction on the email server, mailbox archiving is the answer. This is where all the historical mails are archived from the individual mailboxes of the users. If the objective is compliance, then journaling is the best method as all the emails are archived before they are delivered to the user mailboxes. Both methods can also be combined. So in fact, it makes sense to first archive all historical data via the mailbox archiving, and then ensure that all the new emails that are coming in are captured via journaling. This way you keep only the newest emails on the mail system as old emails are in the archive and journaling and well, then you use journaling to ensure that all the new mails go straight to the archive from then on. Email archiving has advantages for all users of the business, from the business owner to the employees. The business owner, he wants to reduce the risks as much as possible. As mentioned, email archiving helps meet various uh, compliance requirements. The owner also wants to make sure all the data especially the business emails are secure. And while he's doing that, he also wants to try and keep the IT costs down. The IT admin, he wants to keep the email servers running smoothly with a lower workload. Through the deduplication and compression of emails and their attachments, one can save up to 70% of storage space. Emails safely stored in the archive don't also need to be stored on the mail server. So for example, by only keeping the latest six months or one-year-old emails on the mail server, and then you have the users accessing any older emails via the archive. This then simplifies the backup and restore process. It's also mail store is, uh, or mail store servers are very low maintenance and uh, it's quick and easy to install. The user, also should benefit, and they do so through the mail store add-in for Outlook. Um, this is seamlessly integrated into Microsoft Outlook and allows the user to keep using the same environment. It provides a fantastic search functionality where we're actually seeing a lot of users who stop using the standard Outlook search and only use the mail store add-in search in Outlook. It's extremely fast and it provides also the ability to, to search through attachments. Once the user's found the email they're looking for, they can simply restore it with just one click and they don't need to get the IT admin involved. Now, backup versus archiving. Um, this is a, a really a, a standard objection or something we hear on a daily basis uh, from, from partners, customers all over the world. And it's basically customers saying they don't need email archiving because they do backups. 
but none of the previously mentioned advantages can be achieved using backups. And backup and email archiving are two entirely different concepts. They go hand in hand and complement one another. Backup is a short-term disaster recovery tool. Email archiving is a continuous and long-term process. The idea behind archiving is that you want to store something for many years in its entirety, authentic and tamper-proof. At the same time, you need to make it accessible over a period of many years and available at short notice. Backups, they are snapshots. They can't assist, a backup can't assist you with reducing your email server loads, eliminating mailbox quotas, getting rid of PST files. Users can still go ahead and delete and tamper with emails in between the backups. So the question is, how are you protecting your emails in between the backups? Users can't search and restore emails themselves from a backup. And recovering an email from a backup is a mission and it will take up a lot of time. So to, to sum it up, companies should be using both backup and email archiving as part of their business continuity plan. In fact, you should also be backing up the email archives. Um, we're also seeing a lot of companies that have started switching to Microsoft 365, and they believe that everything is safe and sound in the cloud. However, there are a few things companies need to be aware of with Microsoft 365, and that is data responsibility. So even with Microsoft 365, you are still responsible for your data. Microsoft, they will make backups for their own disaster recovery purposes and to keep their platform running. But these backups, they're not for the users to restore data from. And this brings us to the shared responsibility data, uh, shared responsibility model. You are responsible for your data and Microsoft for theirs. If you look at the, if you go on the, uh, on the website um, and, and have a look at the Microsoft customer support service agreement, it's clearly stated that data can be lost, it can become corrupted or breached, and you are responsible for the backup of any and all data. MailStore will provide you with independence from Microsoft. With Microsoft 365, even the archive data resides in the same tenant. And this violates the best practice three to one rule. This rule is basically where you have three copies of your data and you store two backup copies on different storage media with one of them located offsite. So considering how important emails are to the businesses, you wanna keep a full control, or you wanna keep full control over your emails by preserving their portability and avoiding vendor lock-in. You should really be keeping a complete record of all email communication that is totally independent from the email platform itself. If Microsoft services go down, you may not be able to access your emails. MailStore allows you to import emails from various sources, but also to export them, allowing you to stay flexible. Another topic to think about is user self-service. With MailStore, Users can search and recover emails quickly and efficiently on their own without the need to involve IT staff. Um, this is Office 365 or Microsoft 365 is obviously a big topic and, and, and um, we worked with Osterman Research to basically put together a report um, that, that analyzes how it works and, and put together in detail the benefits of third-party email archiving for businesses that are already using uh, Microsoft 365. It's, um, as I mentioned, really detailed. And, and for those who, who want to dive deep into this topic, um, it's, it's really worth looking into. So I hope that by now it's clear that companies should be using email archiving or at least consider using email archiving, but why MailStore? MailStore provides flexible archiving. We support almost all email systems and archiving methods from Microsoft Exchange, 
Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, IMAP, POP3, um, and, and even the PST files. Mail still provides flexible access. We have a responsive web access that allows you to access the archive from mobile devices, smartphones, tablets. Don't need an app, just any device with the browser. There's also a client and also everybody's favorite, the Outlook add-in. Um, this gives you an idea of what the Outlook add-in uh, looks like. Uh, it's basically just an, an additional item in the toolbar. There's a search bar where you can search across all emails and attachments. And once you found the email that, that you're looking for, you just click on the restore message button and it's done. It's all within Outlook. It's nice and it's easy. So I hope it's been a helpful introduction to email archiving and mail store. And I look forward on um, look forward to moving on with the live demo. So we'll now pass over the control to Heiko. Okay, you should see my screen now. So this is Metsa Server, the latest version, version 13.1. Uh, um, this is basically the Metsa client where you do all the administrative stuff. Like um, if you want to, to set it up, you have to create users. If you have a small environment, you just create them manually. Just click on create new, enter name, and it's basically, yeah, all. Um, in large environments, we, of course, recommend to synchronize the user list from directory services. So as you can see here, um, there are several types of directory services. Um, if it's the Active Directory, if it's maybe Microsoft 365, where you want to synchronize the users from, if you have a carrier or iSwap, so basically uh, we support um, all important ones. And with this, um, yeah, you, you're you able to, to get the users um, into MailStore to um, also grant users access to other users' archives if it's necessary. And um, from then on, the next step would be to create archive profiles. So you could get rid of your PST files. If you want to, to, to have an archiving solution, then you don't need the PST files anymore. You want to have all the data in your uh, archive database. So whenever there's the need to search for messages, um, yeah. Um, you should take advantage of, of the search speed in MailStore. I'm going to show this to you in a few seconds. So you could archive the PST files. You could archive your local mail client in case your customers have uh, POP3 accounts. Or you could directly archive from the mail server, which would be the best option. So if it's an exchange, for example, um, you could archive all the user's mailboxes. Um, then you just configure, do you want to include or exclude folders from the archiving? Um, filter rules like, um, do you want to archive all the messages or maybe after a certain um, yeah, period of time, you could also delete messages from the mail server. For example, maybe older than a year. So with this, you can make sure that you don't run into quota problems. So if um, users, um, yeah, users usually tend to to archive or to, to have everything in their mailboxes um, to not delete messages um, if needed. So um, they surely reach the mailbox quota. Um, and with this, you can make sure that messages will be deleted after a certain period of time. Um, with this, you can make sure that the, in this case, exchange database doesn't grow anymore. So it will be faster. Um, the accessibility, the search will be faster again. And messages um, could still be accessed in the archive, of course. So whatever mail server your customer has, um, you can directly access it from here. 
archive the messages. And those messages, of course, um, will be, there will be a deduplication, as Alex mentioned. If I have a look at the archives right now, it's not much, but it's 791 megabyte of data that has been archived. If I look at this, then it's only 190 megabyte in the archive database. So with deduplication, with zipping of attachments, um, the yeah archive size usually is between a quarter and a third of the size of the archive source. And um, of course, the data is in an encrypted database. Um, we have a fiber SQL database that comes with MailStore. Of course, you could also use your own MS SQL or PostgreSQL database. A thing, of course, to mention is our compliance section. So you can um, create retention policies um, to make sure that messages um, would be deleted after a certain period of time or that messages cannot be deleted. Um, by default, users can't delete messages from the archive, but maybe there's a need to do so. And if there's a need to do so, you still have to make sure um, that they don't delete messages um, that needs to be archived. So I could create a retention policy to make sure that messages are retained for at least 10 years. And I could also create retention policies um, that make sure that messages would be deleted after 15 years. Maybe there are messages like job application mails. So messages in this case sent to jobs at example.com that they would be retained for six months, but then would be automatically deleted. So whatever retention policy you want to configure here, it's basically like a search. You just configure it like you want it to be, and then the message would either be deleted automatically, like this out of office, or cannot be deleted for a certain period of time. And um, those retention policies, um, they are a global setting. So even as an admin, I'm not able to delete messages if they are retention policies. So this is basically a short overview of the configuration. Of course, there are more, more options to configure like um, search indexes where you want to have search results, not only from the message itself, but maybe from attachments like PDF files, office documents. So everything could be configured here. From the user access, um, users could use the web access. Um, for mobile devices, this is very important, or maybe for Linux and Macintosh users. Um, the web access is a fully responsive one, so it fits to your resolution of your device. So if it's a smartphone, maybe it's, it's if it's a tablet, or if it's a computer, it always fits to the resolution. And users could restore messages by themselves quite easily. Another, yeah, or the most important um, option to access the archive is our Outlook add-in. With this add-in for Microsoft Outlook, users could easily restore single messages by themselves. If they click on Browse Archive and see the folder structure, and in this case here, you can see, um, of course, that the whole folder structure will be archived. And also, I granted Dave access to Alexis and to my archive. And um, then it's easy. You just have to select the message. You could either open the message and then it will be opened in Outlook and I could reply to it. Or I could forward to the mess forward this message to yeah, another user. Or I could just click on restore message and then I get this small envelope and I drag and drop it to a folder and then it has been restored. So um, it's very simple. You just browse for the message. You could also use our quick search or advanced search 
So my last search was test. I could select where I want to search for test. Um, in my case, I just click on search and after a second or two, I have 648 messages that have been found. And then I, it's basically the same. I click on the message, I click on Weaster message and drag and drop this to the folder where I want to have the message Weaster to. And here it is. So it's a fast and easy way to access your archive to Weaster messages if necessary. And um, from the search, as Alex mentioned, it's faster than the Outlook search. So many customers, um, yeah, they prefer to use our search than the Outlook search. So that's it basically for the uh, live presentation. Um, it just was just a short overview. Um, yeah, I'll hand it over again. If there are any questions, feel free to ask. Let's have a look at the questions. Uh, will Mailstore support Rediff Mail Server? I don't know if you've heard of that, Heiko, Rediff. Um, I haven't heard of this, but I expect this to be an IMAP mail server. If this is the case, then yes, we support it because we basically support any IMAP mail server. Uh, does the solution only provide email backup? Well, mail source focused only on email archiving, so that, so that's what we specialize. It's just the archiving of emails. That's the, the main aim of the software. Uh, Google Drive, OneDrive, etc. Uh, Heiko, can you? It, it, uh, it's part of the, the question. Um, so no, oh, we will only support or provide email backup. And the Outlook plugin on Mac? Um, nope, it's just for Outlook or for Microsoft Outlook. We do not support Outlook uh, for Macintosh. So there you have to use either the web access or you could use um, the IMAP access to directly have a read access to the archive but I'd prefer to use the web access. Any question, do you need any database like SQL Express? No, we've got the, it's the Firebird. Um, yes. Database, correct. Yes, so there's already, there's the Firebird SQL database uh, provided with MailStore, so you don't have any additional license costs. Um, you could use your own Microsoft SQL or PostgreSQL. If you want to. Uh, messages on Office 365, which are journaled? Can those be moved to Mail Store? Um, yes, we. If, if you use journaling on Microsoft with Microsoft 365 or Office 365, um, we have a free complementary tool called um, Mail Store Gateway. So you could forward your messages to our gateway, which is basically like a small mail server, which offers just mailboxes. So you could move, the, you could forward the messages to the gateway mailbox. And from there, um, the messages could be archived for mail store. Um, we, for this, we have manuals. We have um, also tech tip videos where it's explained how to configure this. So it's a free tool that you could install on your mail server. Getting a lot of questions regarding, can you show us how to archive Google emails? Do we support Google Workspace? Um, I think right now we wouldn't have enough time to, 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 to go back to a live demo to do Google emails. That's something um, Wilvac would be happy to do uh, individual live demos. Um, I know for Google Workspace, we're actually going to be bringing out a blog Shortly, Mailstore will be publishing a blog on uh, archiving uh, emails from Google Workspace. So that is something we support. Uh, is there any restriction on the mailboxes for particular Mailstore server? Um, 
Mm, not really. Well, if it's regarding to to the size of the mailboxes, then no. The only restriction basically is your hard disk size. So that's basically all. Okay. Um, with Gmail, shall we set auto delete mails to show? Um, auto delete emails. Um, well, basically, it's up to you if you want to have the messages deleted from or old messages deleted from your Gmail account for basically any mail server. If you want to delete old messages, which is basically okay, if you run into quota problems, um, then of course you you have to make sure that your users have the Outlook add in Metzger client, whatever, to to be able to access their archive to access those old messages. Yeah. Uh, where's archive data stored? Basically, you decide the location um, of the archives. By default, it's C drive, right? Yes, it's C mail archive. You could put it anywhere. Basically, it could be a network share, uh, another hard disk, uh, and, and NAS, basically, whatever. Um, just make sure if it's a large environment um, or a big environment that um, the storage speed um, is, yeah, that this is important. So if you have, I don't know, 400 users, you shouldn't put it on a Synology NAS, for example. Uh, question regarding licensing. Um, yep, yeah, it's a perpetual, it's Mail service perpetually licensed, so you buy the software uh, once based on the number um, of users uh, whose emails are archived or who need access to the archive. But I think that's a question um, that, that Bulwark will be open to, to follow up in more detail. Uh, do you provide keyword based alerts? Hmm. I'm not sure about the alerts, if it's about reporting. Um, what, what do you mean with keyword based alerts? Um, I'm not sure. I think we, what we'll try and do is also follow up what we, the questions we can't get to right now. Um, we're happy to follow up, um, after the session. Uh, what is the solution for more than 500 users? So, um, as mentioned at the beginning, 500 up to 500, that's um, we're standard software, 500 users, no problem. Anything over 500 is a scenario that has to look be looked on on, a, on an individual basis. So yes, it's possible to go over 500, but there are, uh, we're, there are a number of things to look at, daily email volume, the infrastructure involved, what email archiving method um, will users be given, do users need to access the archive or not? So, so that's these in these scenarios. That's something that um, Bulwark will, work, will, will uh, follow up in, in, in on an individual basis. Um, there was a question about labels in Gmail account. Um, <clears throat> what for? What I can tell you is usually um, you create folders. And Gmail is different here. So you basically don't create folders, but labels, which um, with labels, you can make sh you, you could have a message be in two labels, like folders at the same time, which is usually not possible on a mail server. And, and there's our deduplication, which says, okay, um, we, we make sure the messages are unique. And um, with labels, it's possible that the message could be into folders. Therefore, um, we just archive the all mails folder. So we we don't um, yeah we don't have the labels in our archive. We just have this folder to make sure that every message will be archived, and um, yeah, to avoid problems with labels. The 20 to 30 gigabyte PSTs per month under mail store de duplication, what will be the size reduction? That would be about the 70%. Yeah. So I, I guess it would be between four and I don't know, four and seven gigabyte maybe. Yeah. 
Um, do you provide only archiving solution or you have an email backup solution? Well, if the email's in the archive and if you're backing up the archive, then you are pretty much covered all bases, but MailStore in the first case is all about archiving the emails. I think we've got an implemented backup option, right? Um, yes, yes. Basically, that there are two options. Um, one is that we have um, yeah, our integrated backup solution, which is basically an incremental backup, copies all the data to whatever drive you select or folder you select. And of course, we also support external backup tools and support the VSS writer. Right. No, uh, is the solution provided a software as a service right now? Not, um, this is a on-premise solution. So it's hosted on the customer's infrastructure or you basically, another option is if you're hosting it, if you want to host it on a virtual machine on behalf of your customer, that is one option. Um, we're obviously looking at things in the future, but right now it's uh, not, nothing we can publicly uh, talk about. Yeah, ah, the question, can we look at a trial? So that brings, that's perfect for the next slide. So basically, next step, uh, get in touch with Bulldog Distribution. Um, if you want, request a copy. Uh, we've got that, that if, you, if you've got questions about using email archiving, if you're using Microsoft 365, if your customers are using Microsoft 365, get that copy of the white paper, the benefits of third-party email archiving for businesses using Office 365. It's a really detailed white paper. It's, it's 14 pages. It really looks into all the options and, and things to be aware of. Uh, we also have a fantastic white paper called Email Archiving for Decision Makers. Bulwark will be happy to share that with you. It basically, if you're, if you're trying to pitch email archiving and you're trying to, if you really want to understand what it is about, today was just a very simplified overview in that white paper. It really goes into detail. Um, why you should be using email archiving, how important it is for your business. Bulwark will be happy to provide you with a free 30 day trial license. If you are an IT reseller or a partner, go ahead and, 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 and get in touch with Bulwark. They'll be happy to provide you with an NFR license for mail store server. And if you have a specific scenario, um, and, and want to speak, uh, and, 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 and have a look at in detail, um, you know, get in touch with Bulwark and, 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 and get a demo set up. Um, I think that's it from my part. Uh, thanks Heiko for, 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 uh, doing the live session for, for jumping in on the questions. Um, I'm going to pass it over to, to Tessie at Bulwark, um, to, to wrap things up. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Heiko, uh, for an informative session. Uh, hi guys, if you need any POC or demo, any information about the product, you can reach out. I mean, if, if it is Middle East, you can reach out me, Tessie, and if it is in India, you can reach out Prakash. Uh, thank you all for joining the session. Thank, once again, thank you, Alex, and thank you, Heiko, for the session. That's a pleasure. And yeah, guys, keep well, stay safe, and uh, have a fantastic day.